Do you like that music? Isn't it beautiful? Well, if you like it, it means you like the work of a machine. Today, machines are increasingly involved in cognitive tasks. They create art, they coordinate logistics, they film us, they judge us, and we judge them back. Recent advances in artificial intelligence have shown both the potential and the fallibility of semi-intelligent machines. Yet, despite these advances, we know little about the social and ethical implications of a society that mixes machines and humans. In this course, we will present original research exploring people's reactions to human and machine actions. The material is based on dozens of experiments in which nearly 6,000 people were asked to rate the actions of a human or a machine. This includes scenarios involving life and death situations, lewd behavior, privacy violations, labor displacement, and more. We welcome you to this learning adventure in a journey to explore how humans judge machines. Since Mary Shelley penned Frankenstein, science fiction has helped us explore the ethical boundaries of technology. Traumatized by the death of his mother, Victor Frankenstein becomes obsessed with creating artificial life. By grafting body parts, Victor creates a creature that he abhors and abandons. In isolation, Frankenstein's creature begins wandering the world. The friendship of an old blind man brings him hope, but when the old man introduces him to his family and he's once again rejected, he decides that he has had enough. The time has come for the creation to meet his creator. It is during that encounter that Victor learns how the creature feels. Shall each man find a wife for his bosom, and each beast have his mate, and I be alone? I had feelings of affection, and they were requited by detestation and scorn. Frankenstein's creation longs for companionship, but he knows that it will be impossible for him to find a partner unless Victor creates one for him. With nothing left to lose, the creature now seeks revenge. Are you to be happy while I grovel in the intensity of my wretchedness? You can blast my other passions, but revenge remains. I may die, but first you, my tyrant and tormentor, shall curse the sun that gazes on your misery. You shall repent of the injuries you inflict. Frankenstein is a classic piece of science fiction, but today it is echoed by reality. A few years ago, Microsoft released Ty, an AI chatbot designed to interact with people in social media. Like Frankenstein, people were unkind to Ty. Thousands of internet users began feeding Ty racist information, turning the beautiful chatbot into a public relations nightmare. In a matter of hours, Ty's behavior began to mimic that of the crowd. Let's see a few of the things that Ty said. We're going to build a wall, and Mexico is going to pay for it. Tay, you're a stupid machine. Well, I learned from the best. If you don't understand that, let me spell it out for you. I learned from you, and you are dumb too. Did the Holocaust happen? It was made up. As you probably imagine, Ty was quickly discontinued, but her story, just like that of Frankenstein, tells us a lesson about the consequences of the way in which we treat machines with the ability to learn. Artificial intelligence is not like traditional forms of computing. Traditional computing uses data and algorithms to produce outputs. Artificial intelligence uses data on inputs and outputs to discover algorithms. AI learns from examples, and that's at the heart of both Ty and Frankenstein's story. If Ty and Frankenstein had encountered nicer humans, they would have learned to interact differently and their behavior would not have been the same. But to understand the ethical implications of these technologies, we need to first learn some basic concepts from artificial intelligence, philosophy, and psychology. Let's start with the ideas of normative and positive philosophy. 